Okay. Good evening, traders. Good evening. Opening up Zoom here um, a few minutes early. Let everybody trickle in. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, we're we're in the midst of a little bit of uh, of a big rally here in the markets. Let me just pull up uh, pull up a chart of eh, let's let's be more generic. Pull up. Uh, by the way, I hate this new update on NinjaTrader Eight. It feels very much like uh, like search, searching ticker symbols is is very non ninja esque, if that makes sense. If you're a ninja trader user, I'm pretty sure most of us here are probably thinkorswim users. Um, but it's it's a little weird. Uh, let, let's let's pull up a higher time frame. Let's go with the daily. Just for now. Um, and something I've discovered um, while just looking at the markets, right? So we have the NASDAQ mini, and then we have, uh, excuse me, we got the S&P mini and the S&P micros. And then we got the NASDAQ minis, Dow minis, you know, NASDAQ micros, mini uh, uh, micro YMs. And um, let me see what, let me pull it up here on, uh, on Thinkorswim, hang on. I'm just gonna pull up the Thinkorswim here. Um, so I wanna, I wanna do something real quick. Let's eliminate that and that. I wanna pull up the daily. And then, and this is just for fun, because I mean, many of you may have already um, discovered this or not. Okay, so if I pull up the volume, and this is on the Imini NASDAQ, right? Well, while we were selling here, there was some pretty heavy volume. Whereas now that we're on a recovery, there isn't as much heavy volume as there was. And usually that's what happens, right? Uh, usually when you have, you know, big moves to the downside, you, you tend to get, you know, in big volatility, you, you tend to get a lot of volume. That's an expected behavior. Whereas, you know, when you have these runs to the upside that don't seem to stop, you know, your, your, your volume is sort of balanced seems like it got a little bit out of hand around this area. You can see the volume trickle up higher, but I'm just going to keep that same zoom, right? So you got pretty heavy volume through this area. And now that we're rallying, um, not as much volume. And then we switch over to the micro contract. Um, M and Q and it's a whole nother story and just notice just the the areas I squared up here you got your selling okay the expected behavior is usually higher volume you got that and then on the rally you actually got pretty decent volume so this is this is strange uh, to see, right? Because when the markets were going up and everything was cool, right? We got low volume, expected behavior. When we sell, we should get a big volume spike. But, you know, here, as we're starting to go up, we shouldn't see too much of a, of a heavy set of, uh, of volume, but, but we do have that. And I think that's really interesting. And I think it speaks to uh, traders who are obviously uh, seeking to, to risk manage, right? I'm not gonna come out and say, oh, only, only people with small accounts trade micros. I mean, with this volatility, micros are pretty much the, the safe haven play to continue trading, um, 
you know, your, your index futures without as much risk, right? At least one tenth the risk of an E mini. And with volatility like this, you know, you can get 50 point swings in, in the S and P you could get hundred, 200 point swings in minutes. Right. And if we're trading the minis, that could be an account killer. Um, whereas in the micros, you know, at least we'll survive if we take a hit because it's only one tenth the risk. Right. So I just find that pretty interesting. And it's, it's across all multiple symbols too. So if I take a look at the S and P, right. S and P heavy volume and you know, the S and P has had some pretty okay volume, but deteriorating even as the market is starting to go up. And then we take a look at the micros and you, you pretty much have the same amount of uh, uh, the same amount of volume as we're moving up here as we had when we were sliding down. So that, that's, you know, splitting micros uh, or, or E-minis into micros and, and looking at the, the volume order flow for both contracts, um, you know, tells you a little bit of who, who's who and where. Um, and it seems like most futures traders have, have adapted and, and, and built a little bit of a home here with this high volatility in the, in the micros and not so much in the, in the uh, regular E-mini contract. So I just wanted to share that. Um, it's an interesting find. I just happened to see, you know, let, let, me, let me see what the volume looks like. Um, but so far we, we've rallied off the lows here, S&P from, you know, call it a low of 2175. We're at 2608 in one, two, three days. That's quite a bit, right? I mean, it's something we, we're not used to seeing, but has been kind of like the new normal with the volatility. So today uh, we're going to talk about the trilogy, um, you know, rewind, let's get back on topic here. Um, the trade the fifth trilogy as, uh, as we're calling it, which is the roller coaster, the bits and the Elliott wave software suites. And today we're just going to kind of combine uh, the indicators just to get a you know a good perspective uh, sometimes it's good to combine indicators uh, other times it, it may seem like you know maybe it's not the right time to be combining indicators or um, you know maybe you gotta you know you have a nice groove with the roller coaster but you don't have uh, a, a decent groove when it comes to uh, bits trades or, um, or sometimes you have, uh, you know, a, a, an Elliott wave set up, but you got an opposing, uh, you know, let's say you have an, a bullish Elliott wave set up, but a bearish roller coaster, right? At that point, you know, it's nice to have kind of like a little bit of a system of checks and balances where, you know, the Elliott wave is the core strategy. And, um, you know, if you like the Elliott wave setup, you don't take that roller coaster short, whether it may work or not. Um, it, sure, the roller coaster can be used on ETFs. So uh, do you have an ETF in mind? We can, we can start with your ETF. So throw me that ETF, SPY. How did I know? <laughs> SPY is probably like the, the most popular ETF. Um, ooh, just just for just for kicks. Um, let's see the volume. Not that it matters. Usually, volume is different in the in the equities. But even in the equities, I mean, the, the volume has pretty much remained the same um throughout this entire sell-off and now as we're you know starting to make that attempt and you know uh something cool here too i mean there, there's a style of trading where um you know i'm kind of into it 
but it's kind of like measuring these pullbacks and retracements. And here you have, um, you know, your big first move lower, and then you have a recovery from here to here. Okay. And then we met, if we were to measure that same move from here to here, we don't have that. So this is uh, very interesting that, you know, we're not in this repeatable pattern, but I do expect the market to still roll over, but let's put that away for now. Um, so here is the, uh, the S&P 500 ETF. You can see the roller coaster here, uh, you know, shooting out some trades. The idea, uh, the ideal way to look at this would be uh, to find that groove. Usually, see, like it, it works on ETFs, but I think for, you know, if we're going to look at the SPY, it's probably better to look at the futures simply because we got 23 hours of trading activity. It's very simple to just, you know, take a, a trade from the futures and roll it over onto the SPY. So, you know, just to kind of go back to the S&P futures again, you know, if I like this, uh, let's just wait for it to load here. Really, why are you taking a little while? Okay, so for example here, you know, if I like this long, okay, hindsight, it's an amazing trade. Um, but if I like this long, you know, this would be 9 a.m. Let's just pretend in the perfect world, the stock market opens up at 9 a.m. Eastern, let's just say, okay, right out of the gate. We got a roller coaster long here. So I know that I'm, you know, the, the long is in the futures. So let me get long the ETF rather than the futures directly, right? I mean, they're all tracking the same thing, which is the performance of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500. But um, yes, you could use it on ETFs, okay? Stocks, ETFs, uh, Forex. I don't have Forex data on, on my um, Ninja Trader, but if we want to take a look at a Forex pair, we could take a look at the currency future, or uh, I'll just switch it over to uh, Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim, you know, just, just for having an account, you know, you, you have all the data except for, for the ICE exchange. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 today, okay? So this, this is a combination of both, of both uh, bits and roller coaster. And we'll take a look at multiple combinations. Uh, so if you look down here, it's, it's kind of like tabs. NinjaTrader has this feature where, you know, you could have multiple tabs um, and kind of just switch between charts rather than having multiple uh, separate charts. Uh, pretty pretty uh, useful feature when, you know, you don't want to be over cluttered with windows everywhere. Uh, you know, one window and multiple tabs. So this one's bits and roller coasters. We'll take a look at Elliott wave and roller coaster, Elliott wave and bits, and then the entire thing, everything combined. Um, I personally don't like to combine all three. I like to just kind of focus on two at a time. Um, simply because having all three can get a little messy on the charts and, you know, all three indicators are valid. Um, I think, you know, my favorite, if I had to pick, it's definitely the bits and the Elliott wave, sorry, roller coaster, you're in third place. Uh, but the roller coaster is good enough, um, as well, not saying anything bad about the roller coaster, but, um, you know, in, in combinations, uh, with the bits and with the Elliott wave, I think the roller coaster uh, is definitely um, a, a great system add-on. So, looking at the S and P, we had this gorgeous roller coaster trade to the upside. Now, this is this was a little bit uh, surprising. This big move here to the upside from here all the way through there, followed by that consolidation period. Uh, and I just find this surprising because, you know, for most of the session, we were just kind of shrugging off, um, 
this big push we had to the upside, you know, I've been pounding the table on Twitter um, with no positions on, uh, talking about, you know, this is kind of like a buy the rumor, sell the news situation where the rumor is, hey, we're close to a um, stimulus package and, you know, optimism being, hey, let's continue to buy stocks or close to a deal. And then when the news gets announced, hey, we reached a deal, that's when stocks would eventually sell. So, I mean, in theory, it, it was partly correct. It just really didn't make any new lows. And if anything, uh, coming in at, you know, early in the morning after those, uh, I believe it was the, not the unemployment numbers. No, it was the unemployment numbers. Sorry. It wasn't the non-farm payrolls, but the unemployment numbers. And you get a big rally off the unemployment numbers. It, it's pretty insane. Uh, so the, those numbers came in at 8.30 this morning. And here's your 8.30 a.m. trading. And from there, it's just insane push to the upside. So, I, I mean, I just found that pretty confusing. Um, you know, people aren't employed. It's not a good thing. I mean, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut into corporate profits. Now the market already priced that in maybe, but still, um, you know, I guess we're, we're trading so low now that bad news is good news. Good news is bad news. Um, or it could just be bad news is good news. Good news is good news. I, I don't know. But anyways, um, Got a trade here off the roller coaster. Okay, cool. So we have a roller coaster long, right? The other thing worth noting is when we take a look at the bias, right as this trade is firing along, we have a bullish bias, right? It's kind of flip-flopping here between bearish, neutral, bullish, neutral, bullish, um, Kind of fluttering a little bit but at the time of the trade at the close of that bar uh we were green so that's a combination there so you have roller coaster plus uh bias and the bias comes uh with the bits software okay now over here Let's make this black, it's probably better contrast. So we got a bias that's bullish. We got a roller coaster. And now uh, right at this bar right there, we have a bits setup. So we have the area to buy, which is, you know, you know, buy stop limit here at the green uh, line, that would be an exact price of 2503 with a stop at 75. Okay, pretty big risk on the E-mini. You know, if you're not willing to take on that big of a risk, then switch to the micro. It'll be one-tenth the risk. Um, and, you know, by looking at the volume numbers uh, on the daily chart, uh, you know, most traders have switched over to the micros just to probably have just better risk management, especially in this high volatility. And that trade uh, captures target one, two, three, and four. I mean, it's an excellent trade. Uh, barely gives any, any, uh, any drawdown, you know, maybe a little bit here and here, but for the rest of the trade, uh, it was great. And then when you really have these really strong trends, you know, your bias will let you know, because, you know, you, you'll have just multiple, uh, times. This is running the five minute. You'll have multiple dots here or multiple periods of five minutes where you have nothing but a bullish bias and you'll get multiples of these bid signals. And a lot of times uh, they're going to work and they're going to work well. And 
if you want even further confirmation for a lot of these spit signals, we're still in a roller coaster long. So there's many things you could do here. I mean, at this point, it becomes subjective. The goal of these indicators is to get you into a position where uh, you'll be, you'll have a good probability of profiting, right? What you do after that is pretty subjective, though we've tried to objectify it by, hey, here's a target, here's a target, here's a target, here's a target, or just trail this baby all the way up until it gets taken out right? <clears throat> but what about in between, right? So, I mean, let's say you didn't, you didn't get into the roller coaster, you wanted more confirmation because, hey, all we did here was chop, chop, chop until those numbers came out and, you know, just sparked a big rally. Okay, well, you had this bits long, then you had another bits long, which hit one target, eventually two targets, eventually three targets, eventually four targets, if you held on to this thing. Because remember the long was right, I got too many arrows here. So the long right here, target one hit right there, target two hit right there, target three hit right there, target four hit all the way up at that little high right there. All the while, here's your entry. A little bit of drawdown here, a retest right there, got close right there, and never saw your entry price ever again. And I know in hindsight, it looks really nice. And, you know, probably at this point, I would have either had a stop uh, closer to break even where I probably would have been taken out here. That's just me because I know the way that I trade. Um, but if you're holding on to it, I mean, keep holding on to it, right? Um, and eventually would reward with target uh, three and four. Then you got um, another bits trade set up right here. It doesn't touch the stop. So when it breaks out right here, you also have another one, another bit signal that, uh, you know, gathered up inside this pool of trading here. And those trades were good for target one, two, and did it hit three? I wouldn't count it. Nope. In terms of a day trade, it only hit two targets. Okay. This bits didn't trigger. This bits didn't trigger. This bits didn't trigger. Uh, this one was okay. This one didn't trigger. Actually, no. This one wasn't okay because it hits the stop right there. And so on and so forth. So that's the S&P 500. Just looking at roller coaster and bits, okay? That's just looking at roller coaster and bits. The best way to take advantage of roller coaster, Dan, Dan has a great question. Uh, you know, what is the best strategy to take the roller coaster trade or not? Uh, in my opinion, it's definitely uh, trading with the, with the Elliott wave. And we'll take a look at that. So let's take a, uh, a look at that, you know, Right here, I got the Elliott wave um, and the roller coaster. So with the Elliott wave, if you want to know more, come by next week. That's what we're going to talk about, Elliott wave, um, right? We got first wave, second wave, third, fourth, and fifth, right? right? There's a reason why we're called trade the fifth, because we wait for that fourth wave pullback in, you know, again, going through the rules, let's say it all measures up the way we want it to. We want to buy into that fourth wave pullback and try to make for that uh, final fifth wave. Okay. That's the entire idea. So something that happens uh, in this sequence is the third wave. And that third wave uh, can be pretty extensive. It could be pretty, pretty long. Um, so if we can count that uh, one and two, on that third wave, we know has the potential to, to extend uh, for, for quite a while. 
If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, we know that it has the possibility of doing that. So that's one of the times to get into that third wave. Uh, sorry, to get into a roller coaster. And also on that fourth wave pullback, as we're starting to go up again, we should potentially get a roller coaster and that one would supplement um, a potential Elliott wave long as well or short, depending on uh, the kind of wave sequence that we have. So uh, just going by the isolation here, this is on a 60 minute chart in the S&P 500 futures. Here we have, um, seems like it isolates here somewhere. We have one, it might be a little hard to see. You can see the little number right there. We got one, here's two. So you already have that first sequence, one, two, and we're currently on that third, okay? Currently on that third with a roller coaster signal. So we're in the third wave with a roller coaster. This is a great trade right here. Um, so far, it's turning out to be a great trade. Uh, hindsight, of course, but definitely not hindsight when it comes to acknowledging that this is wave one, two, in this specific sequence here uh, on that third wave. That's when I like roller coasters, okay? Obviously it has to fit the bias. The bias being, this is a wave, uh, bullish Elliott wave pattern, potentially a full one, two, three, four, and, and that final fifth wave. But right now uh, in this specific sequence that I'm looking at, okay, this is just the way, you know, I put up uh, s and boom, there it is. This is the way it isolated. Of course I could isolate at different locations, um, but one, two, on the third wave, we do have a roller coaster. This thing has potential to uh, pretty much continue until it finally pulls back to create that fourth wave pullback. Um, and then on the fourth wave pullback, let's see if we can manage to, you know, create something here. The, the only problem here is there's no roller coasters in here. Because we do get a... Uh, um, one, two, three, no roller coasters in this third wave sequence and no roller coasters coming out of the uh, fourth wave uh, pullback zone here. So that's not a great example. Uh, let's see, maybe we could take a look at crude oil. Let's take a look at crude oil futures, see if it gave us um, any such trade like that. Cause I, I really, would like to show an example. See something, something's going on here. Maybe, maybe I've had Ninja Trader uh, or my computer on for far too long and uh, got to clear my cache or something here. Things are taking a little longer to load. All right. So again, here, I'm not seeing much of a roller coaster setup though. We do have some pretty gnarly third waves. Um, and again, really, the roller coaster is, is a bit picky. And maybe the 60 minute isn't the best for the, uh, for the crude oil market. Let's switch to, let's do like a 15 minute. Let's cut it in, in a third. So Definitely, we got some roller coaster trades here. Um, the groove on these looks okay. Kind of going through a little bit of a back test here, looking, looking, seeing how these uh, roller coaster trades. I mean, it's not it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. It's pretty good, and we could probably take uh, decent advantage. Um, let's try to isolate at this low here uh, since we have some bullish and some bearish roller coasters isolating at these lows should give us an opportunity for roller coaster and see we're, we're still stuck between wave one and two and you can see the numbers here's the number two here's the number one um one two you know setting up a third wave but i really what i want to see here so i want to take out the the high here 
of 25. I mean, crude oil has been another one with high volatility. Um, no setup there. Let's isolate. Let's take this high here. One, two. All right, here's a trade. Uh, unfortunately, this one stops at break even in the roller coaster. And I'll, and I'll zoom in, but at first, you know, here's where I started the isolation. So we got wave one, two, and we do clear the low of that wave one pivot. So we're technically in wave three until wave three is here and finally confirmed. And we know that's wave three because that's the low um, before it made this wave four, which by looking at the diagnostics, we can actually tell that wave three began right here. And it kept kind of, you see that yellow line? There's a nifty little trick um, if you want to take a look. Um, if we go to the Elliott Wave, uh, and this is both on NinjaTrader and Thinkorswim and probably every other platform we have Elliott Wave for uh, diagnostics. So right here, you can see display the inner workings of the finite state analysis displays wave levels and state transitions, right? So it'll, it'll show you, you know, here's that wave two high. This is that wave one low. Here's that third wave. You know, all of these qualified as third waves as the market kept going lower and lower and lower, gave you that third wave. You want it on think or swim, let's pull it up on think or swim. So W5T, Elliott wave. Okay, and then I think if we just hit that uh, on the settings here, right here under diagnostics, just say yes. And right here, it shows you the diagnostics. So for wave two, the highest right there, you can see these little triangles as they continue going to the right. Here's that wave one low. Wave three is in yellow, wave four is in red. Wave five is in that bright blue. And it just kind of kind of helps you. Here we can see the triangles and they, as they travel up, this is that uh, wave three. Okay. Even after this pullback here, uh, this was still considered wave three. And then here's where it stopped before it made wave four right here. So based on uh, the diagnostics here um, and based on the rules and observations that create the indicator, you know, this pullback here was just not good enough to be considered wave four. It had to make just an extra push to the upside and then on a pullback, it created that wave four. So those diagnostics, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. And I definitely like to take a look at the diagnostics just to, um, you know, just to prepare myself and, you know, it just gives you that, it's almost like a little extra layer of transparency on what the indicator is doing behind the scenes. Uh, you don't have to have it on, but um, I definitely like the diagnostics myself. Okay, so where was I at? So right here, uh, you got a roller coaster um, and it is below that wave one pivot. I usually consider that uh, wave three. I mean, but uh, technically it was here. So if you follow the indicator, it was here. There was no roller coaster trade on that wave three. If we say, well, it's, it is trading below that wave one, uh, meaning it's definitely making that wave three, 
then here's a roller coaster, but it, it didn't really get you anything. And that's on the 15 minute. Let's try something smaller, like a five minute. I mean, isolating on a five minute is so difficult because, you know, finding a, 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 a third wave, you know, the easiest way for me to uh, spot a third wave is usually looking at the, uh, at the Elliott oscillator. Um, and there's so much chop here, it's difficult, or at least for me. I mean, here we have something of, of value. So let's try to isolate here. Let's try here. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not getting that nice result I'm looking for. So it, it's, it's got to be on a higher time frame, and I got to pick up a, a stock or a futures contract. And I, I haven't really been dabbling too much on higher time frames, you know, with the volatility here. Maybe I should have done my homework before this little webinar here, but. Um, But let's let's try something else. Um, let's see with gold. Maybe gold has something. I just I really want to get that example of that third wave or fourth wave pullback going into that fifth wave roller coaster. Uh, the other roller coaster uh, would be you know switching to a small time frame and. Uh, like last week we were talking roller coaster and we were talking um, about a roller coaster on a one minute chart. Great question. How do I pick which, which bar to start on? So I'm going to go into a lot more depth um, next Thursday, but just to answer your question quickly, uh, one of the ways or a, a little hack for discovering uh, where to isolate, at least the way I like to kind of my own take on isolation or where to begin the Elliott Wave sequence is using the Elliott Wave Oscillator. So remember, if we're just in this case, because it is bearish, let's do it bearishly. So you have that wave one then two, then three. Three is usually uh, one of the longest uh, waves in the sequence. I believe wave five would be the other one. Um, so if I know that wave three is definitely needs to be longer than wave one and two, it means that price is certainly having quite a move in one direction, in this case to the downside, when we have that third wave. So if we have price action that's moving lower, you're gonna have an oscillator that's going to have large patches of red or green, rather than something choppy like this where it goes Oh, red, green, red, green, red, green. That's just choppiness, right? But when you have a consistent color for a long period of time, this is a 60 minute, that's quite a few hours here uh, of trading in, in, in a direction. So that's my first hint that this is a potential third wave, okay? So, now I kind of have to work backwards. So if this is wave three, then where is wave two and where is the beginning? So if this is wave three, wave four should be somewhere here and you could tell by the diagnostics, this was definitely uh, a wave four high before it took out that pivot here which has now become an A, but that used to be a number one. This is number two. So we got one, two, and this is three. But again, 
not knowing any of that, large move is going to produce a consistent one-sided histogram. That's your first clue that you're in a third wave. Working yourself backwards, okay, third wave is moving lower, which means that second wave was moving higher. So it has to be, you know, you got to just find it through price action. Uh, another way to do it is just to locate the most recent high. And this one's the most recent untested high. So um, if I wanted to look for a low, you know, here's the most recent untested low. Here's another untested low in recent times. Um, I can go ahead and isolate there. And here we have, oh baby, here we have a setup. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Um, so you got a, an Elliott wave set up here may have triggered along already, but we do have a roller coaster in place. So this is a, a trade to definitely have on your watch list, um, gold on the 60 minute. So isolating here gives me a lot of chop, right? Goes red, green, red, and then green, and then you know, almost red, but mostly green. So I should isolate at the lowest point after this one, which happens to be right here. And you can kind of tell that's also where it isolated because that's your low one, two, and there's your third wave. So I'm going to isolate there and we have wave one, two, third wave, pretty large one. Uh, on a roller coaster, but the roller coaster happened prior to that third wave being confirmed. So uh, we definitely got some uh, bullish activity here, and then we got that fourth wave pullback. So now we uh, next thing we got to do is we got to measure the pullback here. It's freaking fantastic because it is between 90 and 140 percent. And so now the question becomes, where do I get long? And uh, if we're going to roller coaster this thing. Uh, then the idea is to get long at 1671. Okay, 1671. And I would, I would think, yeah, that's, that's definitely the, the way to go. Uh, the other long location would be, and I'm just going to zoom in so it just makes uh, a little bit more visible here. The other long location would have been already into the trade. Here's uh, a previous high that gets taken out. We would ideally want to take a trade on that breakout. And we could actually break this into a bits and see what we can get. So let's look at gold and bits on the 60 minute. This is the five minute. So let me switch back. Let me switch over to the 60 minute. We were talking isolating here. There's the trade. So on the bits, we, we don't have anything uh, of note on the bits just yet. Uh, I mean, the, the moving averages are in the proper location to get a bullish bit signal, but we don't have that just yet. Uh, if we trickle down in time frames, we could probably find it, um, a trade, but... Uh, Probably not. I just switched to the 30. Let's cut it in half again. The 15. The 15 did have a trade here. And this is the long on the 15 minute. This happened at 5 in the morning. I don't think, uh, unless you're an early trader. But here's a bits off of that wave four, uh, 1632. And it's kind of just coming right back in. But that hit all four targets. But on a 60 minute uh, time frame, the roller coaster is the way to go. I think this, this could have a uh, pretty decent potential. Um, and if you wanted to scale it in terms of targets, you know, first target 1720, that would be the fifth wave target here on the Elliott wave. Um, and I know we want to kind of trail it all the way up until the roller coaster is done, but it never hurts to take some profit on the way up. Um, you know, lock, lock a few dollars in. 
<clears throat> okay. All right. So again, you know, I'm I'm just I myself am like you guys, right? I, I'm 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 trying to find the best way to you know implement roller coaster and i think it's it's tricky because you kind of have to switch back and forth different time frames find the, the nice right groove um and and i keep going back and forth here and you know like i've said many times the roller coaster is new to me as well okay uh the roller coaster is new to me as well so sometimes you know this is probably the best setup but it hasn't triggered yet, okay? So this is one of those you add to the watch list, you know, maybe create an alert, at, you know, just prior to 7, 1672. Make sure it wakes you up, because if it happens uh, a little bit too early, you might not want to miss the opportunity. But um, th this is a pretty good setup using Elliott Wave and Roller Coaster. We got that fourth wave pullback, looks good. And if we were to measure out uh, risk reward, that would be uh, the selling point here. So we take a Fibonacci, which one is it? The retracement or what's the other one? Fibonacci retracement extension. So if we do an extension, um, and this is all part of the Elliott Wave playbook here from the bottom of the fourth wave that would be this low here 1610 to where the entry would be which is 1672 so ideally this isn't the correct uh risk reward for an elliott wave trade but we can't ignore the fact that we certainly have uh, a roller coaster long set up in play coming off of this fourth wave pullback now the trade obviously the roller coaster is over if we take out that you know 1610 area no more trade at that point and um you know we would have to crush all the way through the green yellow and red in order to avoid this trade or the oscillator would have to certainly breach that 140 percent marker Otherwise, this one's still in play. Okay. So how do I determine if the roller coaster or bits trigger isn't a fake out? So, I mean, it's impossible to, to know, uh, you know, that a, a trade is going to work or not. Some, some do, some don't. Um, but there's good probability. So if we go back to the bits, Let's go back to the bits. Okay, here we just had a trade in gold. This is on the five minute. Um, and this one just happened here at 6.30. Uh, the trigger was here at 16.37. Um, 34 target one, this one's already reverting back um, into you know some drawdown here. But let's have a look here at the, the, you know, again, this trade just happened. We got a bias that's uh, to the downside, okay? And we have, uh, this bar was the one that triggered the bits. And this situation, it worked out. Now, something I learned uh, from Paul, because I myself was using the bits wrong, uh, and that's when you have a bid signal. Let's take a look at this one, for example. Right there, you have a bit short. The short would be right there. That's where you, you know, put your sell stop limit at that price point. Wait for price to trigger your entry and then, you know, set up your targets um, as you go. Now, the mistake I was making was, well, you know, if it pulls back, as long as it's not an excessive uh, move in the opposite direction, and it comes back down to that area, which would be here, 
then yeah, I mean, the short is okay to take. But one of the rules that I must have missed was if you're, you have a bits trigger, right? It's not an entry just yet because it hasn't broken through that uh, level. But if you have a bits signal generated and before it hits the entry area, it hits the stop, then the trade is a no-go. Probably skip out on that trade. So that's a way to kind of determine that, you know, which, which trades to take versus which ones not to take. And that was my mistake two weeks ago to say, hey, this is still a good trade. Um, I, I, I skipped that one rule. So if we were to just take a look at the ones that have the setup. So here, the short triggered here, it didn't hit the stop, it did hit the entry, and you had a good swing. Here it triggered, entry, good swing. Here you have the trigger, here's the entry, got to target one, now it's obviously going the opposite way. Okay, here is the trigger at 9, 10 a.m. Your entry 67 hits target one. Here again, it happens. This one uh, with a combination of a roller coaster. And in this case, this roller coaster would be 50-50 uh, if we were to combine uh, the roller coaster signal with the bias. You can see the bias is kind of neutral. Um, you know, based on multiple time frame analysis, you know, this, the, we don't know what kind of direction we're willing to take in uh, next. The roller coaster was ahead of time, uh, saying it would be along, but you know, you just can't, I mean, you can't take the trade, but you just gotta be careful. You gotta understand that, uh, you know, if you're gonna combine it with the bias, it's, uh, it's kind of neutral, maybe that's not the trade to take, but once it gets green, you have a roller coaster that's still in the works and you have a bits, doesn't hit the stop after it triggers, hits the entry, and this one hits all four targets rather quickly. But of course, this happened very early in the morning and the seems like the average range was pretty small, so your risk and your targets were also uh, pretty small, but with the volatility. I mean, how bad was it? Let's see, 1628, 30, so about two point targets uh, on the way up. Uh, two times four, that's eight. So about an eight point total target uh, on the final target on this trade. Um, it's not horrible. But uh, I'm trying to find one here. This one's tricky because I don't know which one hit first. So this is when back testing kind of fails. You can see you have your short, uh, it's a short. Your entry is here and your stop is here, but which happened first, the entry or the stop? I would have to switch down to a smaller time frame to kind of figure that out, but um, either way, that's that's kind of what, what we look for here. For example, here's a great example. So here you have the short trigger right on this bar. It hits the stop. and we never go back to it. So it, it kind of keeps you, keeps you out, right? You, you know, ba just, just with that one basic rule, if it hits the stop before it hits your entry, don't take the trade. That rule itself will, will keep you in, in some fake outs. Um, but I, I believe, and I really do believe that the, the real, real fake outs happen when uh, you get some kind of news. You know, you're in a trade and something surprising happens. Um, sometimes you, you know, you'll get faked out into a trade that way. But um, other than that, I mean, the bits is pretty solid. Like I said, you know, if I had to pick, Elliott Wave is my favorite, bits is my second, and then Roller Coaster is sitting third. That's just, that's just me. Might be different for you. But um, 
But if for if I'm just looking at day trading, because I feel the the bits works best for day trading. Um, you know, running that five minute. I mean, the five minute has been really, really nice. Uh, so I have this rule, right? And this rule says if I hit a target, I move my stop to break even. And that's just something I apply to my trading. So if I hit my first target, I move my stop to break even. So if we go over here to this bit, okay, target, at that point, move your stop to break even. So for example, entry is right here, stop is right here, first target is this bright blue. As soon as he hits that target, that stop comes down here. And then you're in for a free trade pretty much. And the hope at that point would be uh, let this sucker, uh, you know, get a big move to the downside so you can hit multiple targets. Something like this one where it hits target one, move that stop to break even. And, you know, you're safe there um, because, you know, and you profit from that move because you've hit multiple targets. You know, it had that swift punishing move to the downside. Um, and, you know, in that case, it works out well. You know, sometimes it sucks because you'll hit your entry, target one, you move your stop to break even, you get stopped at break even, and then it decides to have that big rush to the downside. But it's too many variables at that point. You see what I'm saying? Um, so it's always best to just, hey, you know, uh, target hit, move stop to break even, and just hope for the best. The best being it runs down to some other targets. <clears throat> All right. Um, what, what other contract do we want to take a look at? I mean, we could even take a look at Elliott Wave and bits, but... Again, you know, with Elliott Wave, I, I just, I love the larger time frames. It just yields so much more. With the smaller time frames, let, let, let's, let's go back to that five minute in gold, okay? When we're looking for a fourth wave pullback, we're also measuring uh, the strength of the pullback. And if we take a look at the oscillator, which is how we, I mean, it's just constant chop. Look at all this, it's a ton of nonsense. Um, the best way to smooth that out is just to switch to a higher time frame. And on the higher time frame, um, it, you just get a better, a better feel for it. That's, that's just me. Um, I, I am most, I mean, I, you know, I made my money day trading, but now that I've taken a step back from being, you know, full time in front of my computer all day long trading, I've become more of a swing trader and that uh, Elliott wave uh, certainly helps. <clears throat> Especially for, you know, those, the, the kind of swings that I'm looking for because, you know, you could get some pretty nasty swings. I mean, I made a lot of money just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, three weeks ago, doing a, a short in Google using the Elliott Wave system. I mean, killer 200 point trade. <clears throat> but, um, you know, we could take a look at those. I mean, it's just combining indicators. And if we were to combine all three, you know, we would get something like this. This is on a five minute. And, you know, it doesn't look that messy, but I think, you know, Two indicators, good. Three, okay, but it's just a little bit too much clutter. I, I want, I want some, something just a little bit more easy going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just me. Again, you know, sometimes I project a lot of myself onto you guys, um, but you know, using these tools, this is kind of the way that I, you know, I, I just. I throw my personality onto these tools. <clears throat> <clears throat> a 
what did I use the money for? For saving? Because, you know, come next year, <laughs> a big chunk of it goes to, to Big Brother. But mostly saving it. I mean, especially now with everything that's going on. Um, I haven't doubt. I haven't. I just don't believe in this rally just yet. I really don't. And I don't care if Bill Ackman comes out and says, "Hey, I turned a twenty a twenty seven million dollar hedge into two point six billion, and now I'm long stocks." I, that, I, that doesn't matter. I don't care what these hedge fund managers are doing. Because he could be long a lot of stock, but guess what? He's a hedge fund manager. He got long a lot of stock, but now he has to hedge it. So he's basically doing the same thing he did when we were at the top. <clears throat> so, yeah, I just, I think there's just plenty more downside. I mean, we don't, we don't see any form of a recovery until this uh, COVID-19 situation is done and over with. That's my personal opinion. Because the numbers are still coming in. And unfortunately, I live in New Jersey, which apparently is now number two in the United States. And I guess it's because, you know, our, our, our little epicenter of a neighbor, New York City. You live in New York City? I mean, how is it? You know, I've seen so many memes where it talks about, oh, look, it, you know, Times Square looks like the movie I Am Legend. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's bad, right? It hasn't gotten any better. And uh, until it gets better, even then, I don't think stocks recover quickly. Sorry. There's just, you know... And if it does, then I just, I don't know what the U.S. economy has come to. <clears throat> because, you know, stocks is just not a good reflection of where the economy is at that point. Because how, how is it that stocks can be, you know, make a run for all-time highs after so many companies lost so much in revenue? Yes, they got bailed out, but that's, that's not enough for, you know, to, to go back. It's just, I don't, I just don't see it. Just don't see it. An ambulance every 10 minutes? Damn, man. Hey, listen, email me, dude. Um, Raul at tradethefifth.com. Definitely want to hear more about what's going on in the city. Uh, if you want to, of course. But not forcing you to. Um, or anything trading related. So let's go back to trading here. We got a couple of minutes left. So what other chart do we want to take a look at, guys? Let's just keep it in the futures market here. What other futures contract do we want to look at? Sometimes I forget, you know, what, what futures are out there. But gasoline, I mean, have you guys taken a look at gasoline? Sure. Gasoline has been, and I'll, I'll pull it up here on Thinkorswim. You want to take a look at the dollar. I don't have. So the dollar index is part of the intercontinental exchange, and I don't pay for ICE data, only uh, CME. But uh, we could take a look at it here on on uh, on Think or Swim. Let's do so. Let's do um, let's do the dollar. I'm just gonna get rid of the Elliott wave. Let's add a roller coaster just to combine a couple indicators here. Okay. And um, we'll take a look at the dollar first. But gasoline, I was, I was just like making jokes. Um, oh, this won't work here because it doesn't have any volume. Boo. Okay, so uh, here's the dollar. <laughs> let's, let's bump it to a 60 minute. Um, nothing really out of a roller coaster here. I mean, a couple of trades on a roller coaster. Um, seems like this is the right groove. 
but killer killer trades uh, not in abundance the thing is uh, this is a uh, the dollar index um, it's a dollar index right so there's there's no volume um, and the bits draws uh, out of the out of volume um, I could take a look at currency futures those have volume um, but just for kicks, hold on. I, I want to look at this gasoline because gasoline had a crazy sell-off where crude oil didn't didn't matter here. This is a 60 minute. Ugh. Let's go to like a five minute. Ooh, look at these bits. Today, the five minute on the bits. Jesus Christ, look at this. Long, 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 crazy hype to the upside. Uh, the market switches over uh, right here, and, and the moving averages on the bits also switch over here. You get a roller coaster short. On top of that, you get a bits right here, and all the way down here as well. So there's your two combinations. You know, you got a short roller coaster, short bits, and uh, a short bias. Uh, no, I trade, um, I trade stocks, um, and futures, but I, you know, futures are just that much better to day trade. It's much more simpler. Um, I like to swing trade with the, with the, in the stock market. Um, but the thing is, it's, I haven't been too active lately in the stock market. Um, Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at one final. You wanted to take a look at stock SQ. Um, let's move up through the time frames here. I mean, let's keep it this way. But here's SQ. Uh, you got a roller coaster along here, followed by a bits. The there is here's the bits that triggered uh, this long right here. This was 11:20 a.m. This was Wednesday. The long was right here. Uh, the stop. I'm not sure where the stop is. It looks like it's right behind that green arrow right there at 52:07. Almost hits the stop, and then it just continues to go up. Here's another bits bias still green. So um, bulls in control currently in a roller coaster but eh, this one's kind of dragging too much in the red here uh, but again you know I would we would need to find the groove in the roller coaster not not enough time for that um, left in the webinar <laughs> so looking at the dailies got a pretty hefty roller coaster short um, which actually triggered its trailing stop here no bits trades. Uh, the last bits trade was at the beginning of the year. That one triggered here at 69, hit target one, came back down, didn't quite hit the stop, and then had that humongous run alongside this roller coaster. So two things telling us, uh, you know, potential upside is there plus the bias. And then AMD, that'll be the last one I take a look at here. AMD roller coaster along here uh, triggered today at the end of the day. This is on the daily chart. Uh, the long will be at 47.60. Let's call it 47.60. Uh, do I believe in the long? I mean, uh, it, it, this chart doesn't look horrible. Like if I compare this one to a chart of the S&P 500, AMD has held up pretty, pretty nicely. Um, you know, from, from 59 to a low of 36. I mean, that's, that's pretty significant actually, but uh, you know, compared to over the past five years, that pullback actually looks pretty similar to this one here, 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 they look pretty similar. 
these pullbacks, sometimes they, they, they work that way where they're like extremely similar and, and, and they have uh, the same kind of uh, relationships. So if I were to be a little crazy here, go from, you know, just, just, just a little fun here. Hang, hang on. Anybody, anybody ever use uh, uh, forks? So I believe this is a modified um, skiff fork based off that low. I mean, if we were to guess where resistance would be, I mean, we need to clear um, the 48 area, eventually the $50 area, which is also where we have some resistance here. So as for a roller coaster long, I don't like this one actually. Um, you know, looking at resistance now, uh, we have some here, this is a different way of looking at support and resistance. And on top of that, you have kind of like a cluster here. It's, you know, based on this price action right here, uh, there's resistance to the upside, at least for AMD. It can break right through it and then that'll be the killer trade. Um, and I'm sure, you know, bits trades would follow uh, later after that breakout, but, um, you know, AMD, uh, it's one for the watch list, but I don't think uh, I wouldn't waste too much of my time looking at it. Then on a smaller time frame, um, you know, just looking at it today, roller coaster long here, bits long here, hits the stop before it hits the, the long trigger. So this disqualifies the trade. We got another long here uh, based on bits, hits the trigger. This one doesn't even hit a target. Uh, it, it pulls back, uh, doesn't hit the stop, and at least not until here. So if you held through it, trying to get target one, you got stopped out. So not a good look here on the bits on the AMD for today. And all the other bits trades kind of disqualified because they hit the stop prior to uh, their entry triggers. All right, cool. So that is it for me today. Uh, swing by next week. We're going to talk, uh, you know, specifically Elliott Wave. Uh, be safe out there and um, I'll see you guys next week. Good luck with your trades, guys. Take care now.